Hey guys, Mr. Burns here again, bringing you another related rates example. Um, this one is um, a very common first year question. I ask it a lot on my assessments, and I've seen it asked on calculus thousand exams or whatever the course is in your universities. Um, and it's one related rates that just messes people up a lot. I've seen it when I've taught the course or tutored people and just cannot seem to get it. And the only thing that I can suggest to you guys is try and do as many possibly different questions as you can. So this is a very good example, a kite example. So let me uh, read a question and I'll draw a picture for you guys. So this is a kite 40 meters above the ground, moves horizontally at a rate of three meters per second. At what rate is the angle between the string and the horizontal decreasing when 80 meters of string is let out? So let me just draw a little triangle and sort of illustrate the idea. So this is a right triangle question. So the you know the hardest thing about related rates is trying to figure out what formula or you know what equation can I come up with to take the derivative of. So this is my kite, and the kite is 40 meters above the ground. So this kite is staying at exactly the same height. So if you can sort of picture this, this kite is just moving horizontally um, across. So it says. Um, so this is theta. This is what we're looking for, the change in this angle. So d theta over dt. At what rate is the angle changing? Just like that. Um, what else do we have? It's moving horizontally, so I'm going to call this x. So dx over dy is equal to um, 3 meters per second. And we have this at the... 80 meters of string have been left out. So it's important to recognize that this 80 is not fixed. This 40 is fixed. It changes no matter it changes no matter what time in the question we are taking. So we're looking at specifically when it's 80 meters. So that is a exact point. The height of the kite is always 40 throughout the question. So there's a very um, important distinction to make between those two. This length is changing, whereas this is fixed. So really, we have to use that to our advantage to be able to write a formula to take the derivative of that we can solve for the change in the angle. So first of all, we need to have theta and x in our question because those are the rates that we have. We have x. We're looking for theta. So the only base of the only question to have, do we include put the 80 in our formula or the 40? So in that's an easy answer. It's the 40 because it's fixed. It's constant. But the 80 is not. That would introduce a new variable because we have to say that's you know h and then take the derivative of that with respect to time. But we don't. We don't want. We only want two variables. The ones that we have, one we're looking for, one we have, and then the other one has to be constant. So if we look at it, it's 40 opposite over adjacent. That's tan. So that's what you have to be thinking tan theta is equal to 40 over x. So there's my theta for this, and there's my x, and that's the only two variables we have. So now I'm going to, I'm just going to re rewrite this guy a little bit. So tan theta is equal to 40, and I'm just going to change this to x to the minus 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the reason why I do that is because it's easier to differentiate if I do. I can just use the power rule. So now the derivative of tan, secant squared, theta, times um, d theta over dt. So remember, this is with respect to time. I'm taking a derivative. Really, I should have wrote this part out. This is my third related rate, so I'm getting lazy now. So here we go. Uh, we need to really write this part out. And I should, in front of here have dt dd over sorry d over d theta no d over dt sorry here we go let's see if i can get this right now d over dt of 40 x to the minus one so now the derivative of this guy is really easy when you rearrange this, so it's just a power rule. So the negative one comes out front, so it becomes negative 40 x to the minus x to the minus two times dx over dt. So you got to remember that always when you're taking 
uh, an implicit derivative if you're doing something with respect to a different variable that you then you're taking derivative of. You got to put that guy in there. All right, so now um, really all I have to do is rearrange this. So I'm going to actually just solve this for d theta over dt. So my first step I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 1 over secant. So I end up with 1 over secant squared theta times negative 40 over x squared. So I'm making that exponent positive and then times dx over dt. So this 1 over secant squared is the same as cos squared. So that's cos squared theta times negative 40 over x squared times dx over dt. So now what I can do is I can look what I have to find in order to find d theta over dt. I already know what dx over dt is. I do not know what x squared is. I do not know what cos squared is. So that's what I need to find. So let's first start by finding dx. So we can use Pythagorean theorem with this question. So it's just going to be x squared is equal to 80 squared minus 40 squared. So we're not finding the hypotenuse, so we got to subtract. So I'll just do that math real quick there. 80 squared. So note, I'm not actually going to take the square root. I'm just going to leave it in terms of x squared because that's more useful because it's x squared in the question. So I won't take the square root and have to worry about breaking it down or anything like that. I'm just going to leave it as x squared. And as you'll see in a second, it's more useful. It's useful in that still. So that's my x squared. Now I need to find cos squared. So um, some of my students will try to find the angle. And I think that's a pain because then you got to do, um, you know, worry about cos negative 1 and all that stuff. And if you don't have a calculator, then it's even harder to do. So cos squared theta, what I'll do is just find the actual ratio of cos, cos squared. So cos theta is um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos squared theta is adjacent squared, which is x squared, over hypotenuse, which is 80 squared. And then my x squared, of course, is just 4,800. I just found that. So that's another use for that x squared. And then 80 squared is 6,400. So I'm just going to reduce that as much as I can. So that ends up reducing down to 3 over 4. So now I just fill everything in. d theta over dt. So that's 3 over 4, negative 40 over, that's a 40, not 90, negative 40 over 4,800, and dx over dt is 3, so I just go ahead, do the math on this, and then we'll have our answer. So negative 3, 3 times, negative 40 times 3, divided by 4, divided by 4,800. And that ends up being negative 3 over 160 rads per second. So there's your answer. So if I was on a test, I would write a concluding statement that would say the angle is changing at a rate or decreasing at a rate of 3 divided. Uh, 3 over 160 rads per second. Um, so this is a great question, guys. Make sure you know how to do this for your calculus courses. And, um, yeah, so if you got any more questions, feel free to comment. Thanks for watching. See you guys in class.